founding of Carlisle Events, which was in 1974, and we've done so with a 50th anniversary celebration right here on the stage. So in just a few moments, we will tell the story of the birth of Corvettes and Carlisle. We'll hear from Lance, we may hear from Judy, but we'll hear from Carlisle Events co-owner Bill Miller as well. And we'll take you all the way back to 1982. But before we get started, we want to welcome one of our local representatives, Far Blind, please come forward. So this is Representative Barb Lyme, and she is a longtime supporter of Carlisle Events and a longtime friend of the company as well, personally and professionally. And we're going to turn around the photo to her because she has something special for us today. Barb? Hello, thank you all for being here. Uh, you know, the last few years have been somewhat of a struggle through COVID, uh, but uh, Bill Miller and Lance Miller and staff here worked really hard to keep uh, Carlisle events open, not only for uh, Carlisle proper itself, but for everybody who has been so loyal and loves Carlisle events. And today we want to celebrate um, everybody that's involved with Carlisle events and their 50th anniversary, uh, 50 years of being a, a great steward of the community, um, great, um, you know, members of actual league, the entire United States is involved and knows about Carlisle events. I travel all over the United States as a representative um, for policy and different things, and everywhere I go, when they ask me about my district, I say, well, I have Carlisle events, and everybody knows. Carlisle events over the last 50 years and know exactly where I'm located. But today I have a very special presentation. It is a House citation from the House of Representatives from Pennsylvania. Uh, it is signed by me and the Speaker of the House. And it says that the House of Representatives of Pennsylvania is always proud to recognize those businesses which, through adherence, to the highest standards of service, contribute to the well-being of their communities, and ultimately to all the people of the Commonwealth. And I'm going to let um, Bill and Lance talk about their journey here, but it, I just want to say congratulations to 50 years, and here's a house citation for Bill and all of Carlisle events. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barb. An audible wow from Bill. We'll let them get their photo and let them get my there. Hold it up, Bill. All part of our 50 Hold it up. year anniversary. Oh, yeah, get in here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Bill, yeah, I bet this isn't the first time you've been cited for something on a road, is it? Usually a ticket when you're driving a car. I, but. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now, so we continue our hopefully you'll use that citation next time you need some zoning. But we know Bill yeah, 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 exactly. story. So you this is where we say this is the anniversary season. Once in a lifetime. And for Bill Miller, when he was just a young man, 30 years old, hanging out at car shows with Chip, and all of a sudden, two men who had a similar passion for all things automotive decided, hey, let's start our own thing, and Carlisle Events was born. If you've been to Building T, you've seen our timeline wall that we installed earlier this year. It tells a great story. But no pictures and no words can tell the story quite like Bill Miller. So we'll start, Bill, with the beginning. It's the fall of 1973. You and Chip are hanging out in the sweetest place on earth, Hershey, Pennsylvania. 
and, you, and you're at the Hershey show, and this story revolves around the Corvette, so I'll take it, I'll let you take it from there. It certainly does revolve around the Corvette. The Corvette is what started this entire situation. Uh, I met Chip in 1969. He had a 69 Corvette that he bought at the same dealership where I worked. I didn't get to sell it to him. I didn't even know he was there at the time. But we met through a, an antique car auction that was held in Manhattan, Pennsylvania. And a friend of mine said, do you know that guy over there? And I said, no, I'm going to do it. He said, well, I'm going to tell you, he's just about as much about cars as you are. So he introduced us. We both had the same last name, which was Miller. So all of a sudden, all we did was talk cars. We spent the next 36 hours straight through together. Just hard to believe right now. <clears throat> but uh, I was an Altoona managing a car dealership up there. He lived in York, and he told me about this car that he had for sale, and he wanted me to take a look at it. So I went down and looked at the car, ended up buying the car. We drove all the way to Altoona, picked up uh, a record actually to pick up this car and drive it back to Altoona. But we spent that whole 36 hours together doing this and all of a sudden we were just best friends. From there on in every year we just lived to go to Hershey. You know Hershey's just, as uh, Mike said, the sweetest place on earth. But it's also the absolute opinion of the car hobby. You know that's where it was in those days. In 1970, we, we went every year from 69 until 73, and a friend of mine was starting the Milestone Car Society. And the Milestone Car Society is a club that's still in business today. And he said to me, if you have something really cool you can put in our space that will attract people. Well, Chip had a 1954 Corvette, and the price was $6,500, by the way, it was a beautiful car. You can imagine what that car is worth today. I'm sure it's still around somewhere. So he put his business card on the windshield, under the wiper. No cell phones in those days. So it said, we'll be back every hour, on the hour. So the very first hour, hello. The very first hour, we come back, the car's laying on the floor in the car. So he thought, oh, well, I guess somebody's interested. He didn't want anybody to know it was for sale. Put it on the floor. She put it back on the windshield. We were sitting here for a couple of minutes and somebody pulled up in a golf cart and said, whose car is that? And Chip thought, oh, there's my customer, he's coming back to buy the car. Well, unbeknownst to us, it was an official of the event, and they said to us, you know, I have that car here. We, we didn't know the rules. You know, we really wanted to, we didn't buy the vendor space ourselves, we were hopping a car club. <laughs> they said, Parks are allowed for 25 years old, cars have to be 35 years old. Well, at that time, when we were in our 20s, we thought a 20 year old car was a pretty old car, but they didn't drive the degree with us and told us we had to take the car off the ground. We did just that, took the car off the ground, we were wandering around the show. Chip said, You know, this isn't a shame, there isn't a place we can take, but we can go to it with the cars that we like. And at that time, the 40s, 50s, and 60s cars were the cars that we thought were really cool, fancy cars, but they weren't, they were used cars. So, we just decided, you know, why don't we just look around for a facility? We went to the New York Fairgrounds, which is typical New York. We went to Royal Mill Park, which was a park that we were supposed to hear in Mount uh, Gainsbury. We went to Williams Grove, and we went to Carlisle. Ironically, better go up to good management, we didn't have a Carlisle. Carlisle is the absolute keystone of the Keystone State. Route 11, Route 76, and uh, Route 81 all intersect here. That's why you see so many trucks in this area, because they, it is the hub of the Northeast. They can go in every direction from here. It saves the fuel and everything else. So it was a great opportunity when we ended up here at the uh, Carlisle facility. And uh, we started our show in 1974. We each put up $500, we were up in agreement. All of a sudden, we were in the car business. And it was, we were really the first commercial 
far away. Everybody, everybody else was a volunteer at their car shows. We paid our employees that, that helped us. And the very first show, we had 6,000 vendor spaces, 6,000 people in 600 vendor spaces. The second year, the green just about every day. There was only one road throughout the fairgrounds. We had tractor trailers stuck to their axles. We had cars and trucks just stuck everywhere. We had to get bulldozers in here to pull them out. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, nobody complained, except the people in town, because we had not all over the place. But uh, the, the, the third year, we didn't have very good weather either. We were really concerned that the show was going to continue. But even with the weather, it was a great event. 1977, we started our spring event. From there on in, it was just growing and growing and growing and growing. And you know, uh, up until uh, maybe the late 80s, early 90s, when computers came out, it was a little tough on the vendors. People could buy something online. But oftentimes they were finding out that that part that they bought online wasn't quite up to standards of what they got at Carlisle. So people still continue to come back to Carlisle. Our spring and fall events, there's 8,100 free market spaces here. If you haven't had an opportunity, we do a collector car auction. And by the way, collector cars. How did that name ever come about? Well, I'll tell you how it came about. People would walk into the show here and they'd say, well, these are our antique cars. What are they? Chip and I thought about that for some time. They're collector cars. Something that's collectible. Now collector cars is used all over the world. Something else that we coined, Chip lived in Europe, I lived up this way. Every time that I would go to his house, there was a little used car lot. They had a, a fence around the used car lot. There was a split rail fence. They called it the car corral. I thought, wow, what a cute name. So we started calling our car area for sales, the car corral. And the car corral worked out fantastic over the years. And you know, all the shows around the country now, they have a car corral. So there was a couple of terms that we coined way back in the day. A half a million people go through the fairgrounds every year with all the different events that we do. We never have trouble. It's just unbelievable. The car people are just wonderful people. You know, lots of times we hear about problems with shows and, and uh, concerts and things. Car people are totally different. We want to thank each and every one of them because if you guys aren't here, we don't have an event. We're always open for thoughts and ideas. You know, uh, there's surveys online after the events. Please take advantage of that. If you have an idea or a thought, it's just amazing we've gotten wonderful ideas over the years. But Lance, I'm sure you have something you want to discuss as well, right? Well, Lance is going to come forward here because he grew up. Lance, Lance grew up here, literally. He spent almost his entire life here doing something, whether it was driving the trash cart, or driving the tram, or driving the cars, he's done it all. But, as a, a younger man, we we'll go back to 1982, when Corvettes and Carlisle was founded by your dad. Share some of those memories of 1982. I just want to say one little thing before let's get started. Mark Ron, you're absolutely the best. Our, our, our state representative was with us the whole way through COVID when we had the problems that we did. I want to tell you, this lady has been an absolute blessing to this organization. You know, we opened during COVID. We got a little bit of trouble over it. <laughs> we ended up getting sued. And, uh, but we beat her. We actually won. We got calls from all over the country and everybody said, how do you beat the state of Pennsylvania? We really have a lot of help. what I tell you. And Mark, so much appreciated. We really are. Thanks, I'm sorry to take your time to go. No, 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 that was a scary moment. And I, I thank you, Mark, because you, you were. You were one of the very, very few that stood behind us. So thank you. So I guess I gotta talk about poor Edson Carlisle. I was just a little guy and my, my dad would go to car shows. Specifically Corvette shows pretty much his entire life. That's all I remember since being a, a little boy. 
Uh, it was very normal for me to live in a house with cars surrounding me just constantly, and there had to be Corvettes and Corvette people. So I got to know all of his friends very well. They became my friends, which we were very fortunate. We just had fun together. So at a very young age, I fell in love with Corvettes. It was really natural. I was essentially forced into it in a way. In fact, he almost pushed me away because I used to go and play Corvette pinball machine when I was a little kid. And he'd say, you know, hey, make sure the kids are away from the cars, you know? So I'd push them away from the cars and you're always getting yelled at as you're a kid. So on that note, you know, yes, there was a point in time that I'd almost waved away from it a bit. And um, then all of a sudden he threw me the keys to this challenge Corvette and Everything changed really quick. You know, I heard the noise, I smelled the fumes. I had so much fun. I'm flipping around the fairgrounds. Envision your own racetrack in your backyard. That's exactly what I was doing. I had so much fun. And that was just one part of it. So again, Mike had mentioned, you know, I was doing that a lot. I did trash, I mowed the lawn here. I, every 10 feet there's a disc, 8,200 spaces. Guess what, I used to put in before Bill and my dad had uh, purchased the fairgrounds, we just had to put paper plates on the numbers, so I'd do that. I had a lot of fun, learned a lot, and I used to get upset at my dad quite a bit because the facts he'd say, you know, hey, go do this and call up, you know, after a long day in the heat. Does anybody need help? And then people would say, hey, we need this, we need that. So I'd be bouncing all around, and uh, it really made me the human being that I am, and I'm grateful for that, and I'd like to applaud our entire team at Carlisle Events because I understand what it takes. I did it from the bottom up and I'm so grateful for the education that he provided me, that he and Bill. So on that note, you know, I applaud all of you guys. You're incredible. Thank you for having such an amazing team. You do have the best in the business. You guys are great. So Corvettes at Carlisle obviously just didn't start big. I remember it when I was a little guy, and there were just a few rows of Corvettes, and my dad was so excited. I mean, literally, this was a party in your backyard, and he's having all of his buddies. And it was so cool to just watch it continue to blossom year after year. And then all of a sudden, GM support came. That made it even bigger. You were able to talk to the people that built the Corvettes. We continue that tradition today, and I can't thank GM enough for being here with us this weekend. You're out here with a brand new CR1 that truly isn't even out yet. And you guys are looking at it, literally cut in half where you can see every part underneath the car. So a big shout out to Chevrolet. It's great to have their support. Um, you know, it, it's not easy doing that. They have a lot of stuff to do. Obviously, they're, they're producing new cars right now. They're looking at the C9, you know? They're looking at the future. So again, when you see them, be sure to say thank you because quite frankly, it's, it's a major staple for us. You're not gonna see that at any other event and we're fortunate to have it here at Corvettes at Carlisle. And again, I applaud Bill Miller and my father, Chip Miller. Um, you know, it, it's amazing what they've taught myself and I'm just happy and honored to be a part of the team. That's what it's all about. Again, I can't thank you guys enough for being here this weekend with us. We know you can be anywhere and we're grateful you're here in Pennsylvania with us. So again, thank you very much. Thank you, Lance, and thank you, Bill. I know it's been 20 years since Chip passed away in March of 2004, and a couple of days ago, the Chip Miller Annual Ghost Establishment and some other volunteers came together to rededicate Chip's Memorial Garden. If you didn't know, there is a Memorial Garden in Chip's memory, and it's outside of Gate 1, so if you have an opportunity to go check it out, please do so. And also last night, as part of the Chip Miller Emily Ghost's Foundation dinner, the Chip Miller Memorial Scholarship was announced. And the scholarship is intended to support the next generation of students who share Chip's love for everything automotive and is open to any high school, undergraduate, graduate, or trade school student pursuing a career in the automotive field. Now, the application process will open December 1st, and the deadline is going to be April 30th, 2025, with the winner announced on May 30th, 2025. So we have a whole bunch of pieces to still put together, but this is happening. There will be info on the website, chipmiller.org, so just keep an eye on the website. Follow us on social media. You can search Chipper Emily Dosis Foundation. You can stop by the CNN tent, which is 
along the new way on IFO, but Lance, with the announcement of this scholarship, what does that mean for you as a further cement your father's legacy in the automotive body? It's almost surreal because in fact it's been 20 years. I, I, kinda, I can't believe it went by that quick. And it's nice to see again that my father, he was an amazing human being. And he would be doing this anyway, but he's looking down and smiling. So it's, it's a great feeling knowing that he's still making a positive impact today, 20 years after his passing. So again, I, I applaud Joy for coming up with that idea. She did a great job, and she does a great job with Corvettes at Carlisle. So give her a big round of applause. Joey Larson. Joey's back here on Bill's car hanging out. I mean, look, there's this young man over here dancing with our care in the world. This young man over here rolling in. Hang out, shirtless, have yeah. fun. But these kids and others like them here at the show, they're the future of the automotive hobby. And we have enthusiasts here of all ages, from babies on up. So again, shipmiller.org to learn more about what amyloidosis is, how it could impact you or a loved one. Usually it's too late by the time you know, but with foundations like the CMAF, we help raise that awareness, and we help support the cause, and this scholarship is a great way to get back. And Mike, you have said something here, like, you, you should tell the audience how much Corvette really means to you and your family. There's another thing that I forgot to mention, but I have a beautiful young daughter, she's 15 years old. Ella, want to guess the middle name? What do you guys think? Don't tell me Ella, that. My dad's name really was Elliot, so that's how we came up with Ella. Well, I told my wife, it's either no middle name or it's Corvette. Well, guess what her middle name is? Corvette. So Ella Corvette Miller. And she's a redhead, so she's a little red Corvette. That's the so yes, stuff. Corvette means a lot to myself and my family, and uh, that's what it's all about. Again, thank you for spending the weekend with us. We truly appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. Thank you guys very much. Keep an eye on the event guide. Download the Carlisle Events app for more. Team Chevrolet is going to be back up here later on this afternoon. If you want to get a jump start on checking out the CR1, you can visit them on the midway as well. And it's a beautiful day here at Fort Bess and Carlisle. Some of the best weather we've ever had. Enjoy the day. Stay hydrated. Have fun. This is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com at the 2024 Corvettes at Carlisle. For more cool events like this, make sure you check your car show calendars, NortheastWheelsEvents.com, SoutheastWheelsEvents.com, UKWheelsEvents.com. And while you're there, remember, post and promote your events on your local car show calendar, bringing you all sorts of special events like this, celebrating 50 years of Carlisle events. I'll see you at the shows.